This son's Micra has been around for 35 years, says car tester Ronnie Levstek. In that time, it's evolved from a boxy super mini to a cute ladies' car to a plain vanilla. But the fifth generation's Micromorphous takes on Nissan's current trademark contoured look. Wallflower, no more. The Nissan Micra has taken on a daring design with a low V-shaped radiator grille, Svelte headlights, a striking rising belt line, and a flat roof. The rear door handles are hidden in the C-pillar. The rear looks more like a compact than a subcompact. Ronnie is thrilled that a diesel engine is once again available for the Micra. The fourth generation didn't have one, but the fifth generation offers a 1.5 liter diesel made by Renault. It produces 66 kilowatts and 220 newton meters of torque. Nissan offers three engines for the new Micra, two gasoline powered and one diesel, which we're testing. The Micra rolls off the Renault assembly line in Flans, France. The base model is for just under 13,000 euros in Germany. Oddly enough, the start-stop system comes only at a surcharge for all the engines. But with a few extras, this little car is near the low-priced end of the larger compact class. Ronnie is impressed with the Micra suspension, saying Nissan did a good job of adjusting it so you don't feel like you're being thrown out of a curve. This vehicle is anything but squishy, he says, and even at the end of a long trip, it won't give you a backache. Along with the many design options, several optional assists are offered to make driving and parking the Micra easier like a 360-degree camera, an emergency brake assist, a lane departure warning system, and a blind spot warning system. Micra has changed not only its exterior, but also the whole structure of its interior. Ronnie likes the steering wheel's beautiful design, saying it fits your hands wonderfully. And it's well cut. That's highlight number one. Highlight number two for Ronnie is the interior color palette, which gives it a feel-good ambience. But Ronnie finds something to complain about, the sun visor. What was Nissan thinking, he wonders? The visor is so big that it can block your view of the road entirely, so you have to push it up against the windshield. The interior's colorful fabrics and quality materials give the car pep. The instruments are nicely arranged. The driver and front seat passenger sit comfortably in well-designed seats with plenty of room to move. But in the rear seat, things are a bit cramped, as in many small cars. Plus, the rear passengers have to roll the windows down by hand. All around the back seat are ISOFIX attach points for child safety seats. Ronnie sums up, here is a compact four meters long. Gone is the cute exterior of earlier models, and this generation version won't be called a ladies' car anymore either. It's really well designed. Apart from the sun visor, Ronnie has no other complaints. Daring, different, distinctive. After its C4 Cactus, now Citroën has also given the C3 a flashier design. But will potential customers like it? The C3 is an especially important model for its maker, accounting for one in five Citroën sold in Europe. The air bumps guarding the side doors are already familiar from the Cactus. Our car tester Ines Petri says the C3's curves and smooth surfaces make it look the way a round peppermint drop feels on your tongue.
The exterior design avoids edges and corners, but while easy on the eye, it's far from boring. The accents on the fog lamps and exterior mirrors match the color of the roof. The front takes its cue from brawny SUV crossover models and boasts three lamp units on each side. The air bumps on the doors are optional, but they make a big contribution to the C3's conspicuous look. Nine exterior colors and three more for the roof provide a selection of 36 different color combinations. The C3 loses some points with its trunk. Whether loading or unloading, you have to heave your cargo over this tall trunk sill. And when you put the back seats down, the resulting surface has a big bump. Not pretty and not practical. We test drove the C3 with the most powerful of the three gasoline engines available. The 1.2 liter three cylinder engine produces 81 kilowatts and a substantial 205 Newton meters of torque. And that's at just 1,500 RPM. Our test car comes with a top equipment package, Shine, and the price, just under 18,000 euros in Germany. Ina says 81 kilowatts will take you down a country road at a fast pace, but the fun of driving is dulled a bit by the loose steering. You have to turn the wheel quite a bit before the car responds, and the manual five-speed transmission responds a bit slowly, too. A six-speed automatic transmission promises faster shifting, although it's available only in combination with the most powerful engine. The designers left nothing to chance in the interior, Ines notes. Everywhere inside, components take up the motif of the side door air bumps. The C3's interior is similarly unconventional. While the competition is working hard to make everything flow smoothly around the driver, here everything is very angular, with lots of color variety and attention to detail. Where the C3's exterior is all curves and smooth surfaces, says Enos, the interior straight lines and 90-degree angles remind her of a cubicle Swiss herb candy. That gives driver and passengers plenty of room to move. For Enos, the interior seems as if the engineers constructed it around an imaginary box. Among optional extras are practical assists, including a parking aid, a blind spot alert system, and traction control to reduce wheel spinning. Ina says you can connect your cell phone with the car through the central console operating unit. The radio can be controlled the old-fashioned way, with a knob to change the volume. But many other buttons have been eliminated. The air conditioning and heater can only be operated via the touchscreen. And since the display is located rather low down, it definitely diverts your eyes from the road. The car itself, however, has its gaze firmly fixed ahead, and it can save images in case of an accident. A technical special in the Citroën C3 is this dash cam, says Enos. Citroën calls it the connected cam, and it's integrated behind the mirror. You can take pictures or shoot short film clips of the road ahead as you drive, and then share them with friends on the social networks. Ina sums up, part round peppermint drop, part herb candy cube, Citoan C3 is an interesting mixture that will get attention on the road. The C3 has also won the attention of a jury of design experts. This July, the car will be awarded the renowned Red Dot Award.
Mercedes has given the AMG GLA 45 Formatic a facelift. The restyled front section and the new lip on the front spoiler enhance the aerodynamics. Packing 280 kilowatts of output and 475 newton meters of torque, the AMG GLA is among the highest performance cars in its segment. It makes the dash to 100 kilometers per hour in a swift 4.4 seconds. VW presents the second technology generation of the e-Golf. The new electric power unit now delivers 100 kilowatts of output, increasing the car's range from 190 to 300 kilometers. The new e-Golf now also has better acceleration and a higher top speed. A new assist function helps the driver to adopt a more energy-saving driving style. Prices for the new e-Golf start at just under 36,000 euros in Germany. By McLaren, With McLaren, you get exactly what you see, says our carman Reinhold, a supercar with outstanding performance, room for two and two go-wing doors. Less space, but more power. So, how does the McLaren shape up in everyday conditions? The British have a long tradition of motor racing and supercars. And what better example than McLaren? Its motorsports team has been a fixture on the Formula One circuit since 1966. And in 1993, McLaren also began making hand-assembled sports cars. Its Formula One R&D center is just around the corner from its commercial production facility, a proximity that the 650S Spider benefits from. With brake steer technology on board, originally designed by McLaren for Formula One, the inside rear wheel is slowed around turns, aligning the front of the car to the apex of the curve. That means the driver can brake far later and accelerate sooner. The system was banned in Formula One before it was even introduced. The car takes its name from the 650 horsepower generated by the engine, which translates into serious pickup. In 2013, it won McLaren the first of three successive Engine of the Year awards. So for a piffling 255,000 euros, you get road-going Formula One engineering. A supercar that accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3 seconds, from 0 to 200 in 8 seconds, and 0 to 326 seconds didn't worry about city traffic. But that's no problem today thanks to the 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. The rear view to the right is impeded by the thick B-pillar, but you do have the rear view camera. The interior is replete with leather and carbon fiber. And if you can't get enough of the sound of the V8 on the inside, even with the roof closed, you can just pop down the rear window. On the occupant safety front, there's a carbon fiber monocoque, another familiar feature for motor racing. And the British engineers took a further cue from their Formula One creations with a 650S's air brake rear spoiler. It shifts up when the brakes are applied to ensure maximum downforce and stability. During acceleration, it retracts automatically, thereby reducing air resistance. It's similar to the famous drag reduction system, or DRS, used in Formula One. The Spider does 330 kilometers an hour with the roof down, says Reinhold, but at your destination, some of the time-saved driving will be spent shopping because the trunk is only big enough for a bit of hand luggage. Demand for SUVs continues unabated. Nearly every major car maker maintains their line of sports utility vehicle and related products. 
Our car reviewer Emanuel is taking another look at one of the classics of the compact crossover segment, the Volkswagen Tiguan, now in its second generation. Our test car has a 2 liter 110 kilowatt diesel engine. Emmanuel delicately describes the test car's 110 kilowatts as unexcited. The specs say it will push the car from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 10 seconds, but it feels longer. SUVs are by no means known for their fuel efficiency, even if the car maker rates consumption at 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers. At a good 8.6 liters, the Tiguan we checked out proved quite a bit thirstier. It occurs to Emmanuel that the longer he drives, the more peculiar the questions racing through his head. What, for example, does Tiguan actually mean? The first association he has is a cross between a tiger and an iguana. But with those 110 kilowatts, this is more an iguana than a tiger. It can crawl across the terrain at a leisurely pace, but when necessary, it can take off on a sprint. The name Tiguan really was concocted from a combination of tiger and iguana. A prominent German automotive magazine asked its readers to vote on which name they preferred for the new SUV. Tiguan secured 36% of the votes, outdoing alternative options such as Nanook, Namib, Rockton, and Samoon. The Tiguan's basic design concept emphasizes the practical use of space. Bold horizontal contours dominate the front. Broad structural lines underline the car's sporty character. Side skirting provides protection in rough terrain and an off-road look. Emmanuel especially likes the Tiguan's versatility when it comes to space. If you need more legroom and back, just pull the lever under the rear seats. If you have no passengers but lots of cargo to carry, you can pull the seat all the way forward to create more space. The seats stay up, so whatever's behind them will stay put, even if you slam on the brakes. Depending on how far forward or back the rear seats are, the cargo space ranges between 520 and 615 liters. Folding the seat down means a little over 1,650 liters. Tigers and iguanas can negotiate rugged terrain pretty well, says Emanuel, just like this test car, thanks to its four-motion all-wheel drive. Switching to off-road mode activates a range of assists. One improves traction on slippery driving surfaces. Another allows the use of the engine for extra braking on steep descents. The off-road mode handles uneven and muddy terrain quite nicely. The VW Tiguan starts at just under 27,000 euros in Germany, but the equipment included will only satisfy the most Spartan standards. Adding just a few options swiftly hikes the price closer to 40,000. The car we tested with all-wheel drive and direct shift transmission lists for over 51,000 euros. Yeah. Summing up, Emmanuel still thinks the SUV he tested is definitely more of an iguana than a tiger. But he could easily imagine that a stronger engine version would put more tiger back into the Tiguan. Every year, vintage car fans and pundits flock to Essence Trade Fair Center for the Techno Classica. Last year, crowds of over 200,000 made it the world's most popular vintage car and motorcycle fair.
The Volvo P1800S was once driven by Roger Moore in his TV role as The Saint. And the Techno Classica was the perfect spot for Volvo to celebrate its 90th anniversary. Also on show was a 1933 PV654. In those days, Sweden's car market was dominated by American models, so Volvo needed a large six-cylinder car to compete. The party wouldn't be complete without a Volvo 145, given the Swedish car maker's association with station wagons. This man's father used to drive a red Volvo and was very happy with it. The PV444 was nicknamed the Hunchback. It's hard not to wax nostalgic surrounded by so much history. Officinato Gunther Wimmer explains that the car won the 1962 German Touring Car Championship. It was driven by Josef Maaßen from München Gladbach. He ran a coffee roasting house, and he won in this car with a 1.6-liter engine. That was the size class as well. The next one was the 1.8-liter engine. Josef had to go up against the Borgweid Isabella, powerful for the time, and he did it. Opel is reviewing their tradition of large sedans at the Techno Classica. The Admiral was Opel's flagship in the late 1930s. Klaus Adler started out with a 1951 Capitaine. He adjusted the valves for the first time when he was 12 or 13. He describes the sedan as the non-plus ultra for the time. The first one was launched on the company's 75th anniversary, so the engine had to put out 75 horsepower. That was Opel's own 3.6-liter unit from the Blitz. In the 60s, the Diplomat was a highly coveted luxury sedan, and it still is. Embodying the 1970s concept of luxury is the Opel Senator. This body expert grew up with the car. He used to see it everywhere parked along the streets. Older gentlemen liked to drive it. He thought it was great. It was a status symbol, but he's more interested in the old mechanics than the new modern stuff. A total of nearly 70,000 senators rolled off the production line. This Opel Capitain with gold-plated fittings is a special edition. It was the two millionth car made by Opel, and the only one of its kind. Opel had become the first European car maker to pass that production landmark. Also at the fair are vintage car clubs from around the world, exhibiting their most prized specimens and talking shop with other owners. At the Porsche stand, the car maker is observing the 40th anniversary of the 928 Fastback Coupe. It was made from 1977 to 95 and occupied the top of the range. Porsche fan Gunter Weber describes it as a young man's dream, a superb car, high quality and high performance, yet affordable. The average earner could buy a car like this. He praises the car to the sky, saying the engine ran smoothly, and it was and still is very fast. This one-off Porsche 928 was a study for a four-seater and a gift from the company's workers to the legendary Ferry Porsche. Gerhard Kruger explains the idea behind it was to get more people into the car, but still market it as a Porsche. It was a study, but never went into production. They were trying out various ways to increase profit. As we can see, it's still around, and it costs even more now. An important factor in preserving and increasing value is original components. Porsche, for example, has over 52,000 parts available for its past models. That makes it easier to repair and restore classic cars and helps ensure that the old masterpieces never lose their shine.